Thank you. This is Sonia Wagner representing PCA Families in our first of many recordings designed to capture lived experience and best practice evidence-based learning that assists kinship, permanent and adoptive parents and carers in supporting young people. PCA Families is a zero tolerance of child abuse and we are committed to establishing and maintaining child safe environments. Being able to learn from peers and connect with those who may help us is particularly important. Today, we are discussing therapeutic parenting practices. Before we do, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. We pay respect to elders past and present and express our intention to move together to a place of justice and partnership. Today, I'm joined by Linda Cook. Linda is an adoptive mother who started her journey into therapeutic parenting practices as she looked for ways to parent with nurture and positivity. Thanks for joining us today, Linda. Oh, thank you, Sonia, and thank you for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about what therapeutic parenting is? I understand it's a methodology involving nurture, high structure and parenting with safety. Is that it or is there more to therapeutic parenting? Um, Definitely, it has all those elements in it, I would definitely say. Um, in terms of the high structure, I suppose for my family and my child, it, it was more a consistency and a routine and just those rituals in the family. Um, in terms of, uh, it's about creating loving attachments mm -hmm. and working really hard to understand your child's behaviours. Yeah. Uh, it's also about knowing yourself as a parent. Yes. <laughs> you know, that self-awareness as a knowing. Um, yes. And, and providing that um, relational and unconditional support for your child, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. You I know? think that's a good point. We all learn something about ourselves along the way as we're parenting. Yes, definitely. Uh, don't yeah. we? So. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, great. And okay. In terms of high structure, I am, um, yeah. Like I said, it probably wasn't so much my child, the high structure. She didn't really need those firm boundaries. In fact, mm -hmm. she would have probably reacted against those. Yes. And so I actually have to say it's not one size fits all. Yes. But for some children, you might need those really clear, concise boundaries. Boundaries, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. and that yeah. high structure. They may thrive on that routine and rhythm to a family life. Yes, yes. So, um, so use your own judgment. Yeah, <laughs> I would say your own judgment, but still, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It also um, touched on um, early brain development. I'll learn mm -hmm. quite a bit about that and um, what trauma can look like and the different ways trauma can be expressed in a child. Yes, yep. Um, but really, like many other parenting courses, it, it was really developing a lens of understanding about your child. Yeah. And, uh, and their behaviours and understanding that they come from a, a deep place of hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that how you discovered therapeutic parenting? Looking for... um, I, I discovered it, a friend and I, who I'd, uh, we'd been on the adoption process together. Mm -hmm. um, we were both noticing that our children displayed some behaviours um, that, that were, we really felt we wanted to understand a bit more and we wanted to help them as much as we possibly could mm -hmm. we did lots and lots of reading and talking and learning in the space just because <laughs> we were interested and in, you know and also at times we were floundering yes you know so it's you a know common story yeah yeah <laughs> so you reach out to people um to try and help you with answers and really this was a turning point for both of us mm. Wow. So we both look back in all the learning we've done since. And we both said this was the most significant turning point in our parenting style. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so tell me what are the things that you learned to do or, or yeah. not to do that was so valuable to you? Well, I kind of noticed that um, it was really when my daughter was about six and I learned when she was in prep and in the playground that my parenting approach was a little bit different to other parents. Mm -hmm. I couldn't actually shout and bark at my child and you know, <laughs> just as I, well. Yeah, <laughs> just as well. Um, you know, that tough love approach, you know, they'll um, yeah. Uh, 
you know, oh, they'll follow, you know, or whatever. Yes. Um, yes. Or I couldn't actually be late mm-hmm. for my child. Mm-hmm. That yes. was really an important thing. Yes. Um, and so and other parents seem to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I, um, I kind of knew that I'd have to um, have a different approach to parenting. So mm-hmm. um, my number one priority for my child was to give her a sense of safety. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I absolutely believe that fundamentally, that that felt safety. And that's different to just having the doors locked at night and mm. the house being secure. It's, yes it's not what I look around and think of as safety yes it's her felt safety yes and that's not just her physical safety is she emotionally safe with me can she drop her bundle and yes it's okay yes <laughs> can we have yeah those can yeah. home be the space where she can just let everything out yeah. and be her yeah. true self yes absolutely. I'll just know that no matter what I'm going to be there yes you know, yes that whole yeah, no matter yeah. what, I'm going to be there. And it makes sense when you think about, I mean, I don't know about you, but we all learnt about Maslow's hierarchy of needs in school, yeah. you know, yeah. once you've met that yeah. sort of food and, yeah. and shelter, it makes sense that people need to feel inherently safe to the, to then build other skills and, and move forward. So, yeah. 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 And I even see it as a teacher in school as well, you know, when a, cho- a, a child f- feels safe, Yes. Uh, they're, they're actually more likely to show their voice to speak yes. out. Yes. A classroom that feels safe. Yes, absolutely. And even as adults, we do that too, right? I'm not going to speak up in a meeting if I feel yeah. like someone's going to shut me down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A staff room that feels safe. You know? Yes. Uh, yes. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. And yes. so. Uh, for your child to express their needs and all that felt safety so yeah uh, I suppose that was it um and uh, I did I suppose I did that by trying to make myself as present as possible mm-hmm. um I was lucky I was able to have quite a bit of time off when she was young yes um the department of education give you seven years um family leave and I took advantage wow. of a lot of that so um yes you know, um, still retaining your job. And um, so I was allowed to be as present as I could possibly. And I know that's not possible for everybody. Yes. Um, I, I do understand that. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, but I suppose yeah. present as well um, in terms of, um, you know, even now I've got a teenager, mm-hmm. um, just finding those times to be present yes offer that safety you know yeah. making a cup of tea at the right time and, yes you know putting the phone to the side <laughs> yes yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. being yeah. totally kind of connected yeah. in I guess yeah. so yeah. And, and I felt that that safety gave her that uh, ability that um that she got to a point where I could be a few minutes late mm. and it'd be okay yes you know? yes <laughs> and, and and it builds up that resilience as well yes and that that was something I learned yeah, yes really through the therapy and yes. the nurturing um you mentioned the nurturing uh the that was more I suppose that's just just that kindness coming out anyway mm-hmm. you know, I do believe we should treat people with kindness and as a teacher mm-hmm. it's something you know I've learned that kindness goes a long way yes yes kindness listening empathy and you know yes yeah yes and um yeah and how do you demonstrate kindness it's a an interesting concept isn't it so yeah is I it suppose. by doing those things like being calm and or being yeah. available for conversations or or is it other things so yeah I think it's been thoughtful as well I, th- mm-hmm. I think what you just said those little things I remember actually when my daughter was young, I used to um, like draw a little heart on her banana. Yeah, cute. So that she goes in the lunchbox and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm still here. I'm here for you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, yes. yeah, you know, because school wasn't always easy, like it isn't for many children. Mm-hmm. And so yes. it's like, yeah, just a reminder. I'm at home. and Yeah, you know, absolutely. That reminds me of um, I used to put notes in the um like a, they took a lunchbox so they were going away on camp or something or might hide some little notes through their 
their clothes or yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. then they'd come home and go oh yeah the other children wanted notes too from yeah. their parents <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. um reminds yeah. them that you're there and that you care yeah for them. so yeah so yeah, yeah. So, so yeah yeah that's great so so it sounds like it's about being present and supporting it, yeah. yeah and um and I do remember that um you know I do remember that with the uh, therapeutic parenting we learned about time in yes rather than time out with mm -hmm. each other um that and that was a significant learning moment mm -hmm. and I think it was my gut as all had always told me that actually time away wasn't the right thing it was the I don't know uh, when I did it was the time of super nanny do you remember oh super yes <laughs> the naughty step yes um, <laughs> oh, it just it didn't feel like it was quite the right thing and when I did the therapeutic parenting and we were told about having your child for time in rather than time away yes I thought this is actually this is it Yes, I've noticed I hadn't actually put my child in time away, but sometimes might separate her. Yes, like, you know, and even that she'd be distraught by that. Mm. Really yes. distraught. Yes. And so um, I realized that actually sitting side by side with her until she could become, you know, regulated and was actually better. Yes. You no. Know? And if she'd let me hold her, you know, yes. sometimes she was beyond that. Yes. Times when she would. Yep. Just making sure once again that safety is safe. You hear yes. calm voice. And, and I'm not leaving you. I'm, I'm here not for you. you. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I'm here. Is that was that hard to do at any moment in time? I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or were you mind. just naturally a calm person no. all the time? <laughs> I, I generally I generally am reasonably calm. Yes. However, I do remember <laughs> the moments <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I do remember, yeah. <laughs> deep breathing. Yeah, <laughs> deep breathing, my own body. And it's that, once again, not learning yourself and what mm -hmm. your triggers are, yourself mm -hmm. as a parent. Yes. Really, yeah. Yes. Just, and getting to know, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And a lot of, oh, yeah. I, I think perfect parenting is out. Yes. Totally. Oh, really, you know. Yes. I look back, and I am embarrassed about some things I did, but I yes, did, but I do know some things worked, and yes. that worked for me and and our yes. family. You know, my yes. husband's also very calm, so we like a pretty yeah calm house. Yeah. Yes, and I think that's been beneficial to my daughter. Yeah. yeah. And does timing have to mean talking, or can, because I'm imagining situations where some children might be really agitated and yeah. and not wanting to converse? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you said that because just earlier I did um, I've done a trauma informed uh, webinar with the Department of Education, mm -hmm. and um, something that came up that really resonated with me. They talked about. Um, First of all, you regulate your child. It's yes. all about regulating. Mm -hmm. And forget reasoning. Forget reasoning. I don't know exactly what the number of minutes is, but there mm -hmm. is an allocated number of minutes you can leave for re that you mm -hmm. have to leave before you can even get to reasoning. <laughs> you know the brain science. And, uh, and so it was regulate and then relation again. Okay. Build the relationship again. Right. And then reason. Okay. And I thought yes. that really made sense. Yes. Absolute sense. I mean, yes. it's something I probably do, but I don't think it through. Yes. I'm quite sure I've tried to do it in the wrong order in the past. I <laughs> <laughs> found out yeah. the reasoning until there's a time and a place, you know? Yeah. Right time, right place. Yes, yes. So would that be the case uh, with, you know, a situation where you've got, you know, one sibling hitting another sibling or you know, not wanting to really engage on any level about something that they've done that needs redirecting or correcting? Yeah, I, because I don't have two children at home, I just have the one, I probably can't uh, yes. comment too much on the two sibling thing. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, I suppose, yeah, 
Uh, but I still, I definitely think whatever you do, I'm thinking I can apply it to my teaching though. I've had plenty okay. of two, two yes. children. Yes. I, need, uh, I definitely, you, you absolutely go straight to regulation. Regulate, yes. Yeah, definitely yeah. regulation first. And and I suppose if we got two children, it would definitely be with a teacher's lens on. Mm-hmm. I would choose my teacher judgment who actually needed regulating the most. Yes. You get some support if you can, you know. Yes. And I suppose if you're at home with two children, um, you know, really, hopefully there's one child who can go away and regulate themselves a bit or. Yes. Um, and then, yeah. Yes. But there's always that repair. And that's another part of it all right mm-hmm. at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's always that repair time. Repair. And, yeah. 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 Makes sense. So, yeah. Um, yeah definitely makes sense to me what you're saying so I think regulation seems to be part of safety first so yeah 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 Yeah. and the structure you talked about what sort of things did you find were important there to to offer yeah in terms of structure I think it's just I found for my daughter it was never kind of putting anything into a routine Mm -hmm. that I hadn't already spoken about ahead of okay yes you know it was having a weekly kind of timetable that had a flow to it right also warning her ahead of time that something was coming up yes you know if there was a big gathering especially or there was going to be a birthday party kind of maybe planning for it um she tends to be on the more introverted side so you know just helping her navigate uh, and working out a plan and really um, being a bit proactive, mm-hmm. you know. Yes. And so, um, so really keeping those structures. Yes. And uh, and meal times and and all those things quite as regular as possible. I yes. Have to sound not great. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly in my family, I'm probably <laughs> least effective at. Uh, uh, you know um but and how far did that go did that come down to meal planning and knowing what they were going to eat or you know like sort of how far do you go with that I guess I suppose when my daughter was little I was well known as being the snack queen of all my <laughs> friends and if anyone watched this they'll like, yeah. <laughs> you know I always had like the snacks and the food um yes. going and that was you know something I learned on the course as well and mm-hmm. um yeah Karen Purvis is someone mm-hmm. I don't know if people are aware of yes um, and learned about her on the course got an opportunity to hear her speak mm-hmm. and she was really big on um she did uh, was it trust-based um parenting yes. I think it was yeah um wonderful woman um, relational yeah relational yeah, yeah. And she talked yeah. about always giving your child that turkey sandwich before you know going to bed all those times to going out or things like that yes and I really think that um yeah there's a lot of value in that so I probably predicted my child's uh, rhythms and routines as well yes so whilst I wasn't uh, had it hard and past structure I was probably more um they called it on the course I think it was your child's detective Yes, be a child really, detective. Yeah, stress detector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, and you, yeah. And, and in teaching, we call it um, if you can predict it, you can prevent it. Yes, it's you a know? good point. And I don't actually believe you can predict everything because otherwise we'd be spend all our time mind reading and yes, <laughs> but if you can predict it, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can always, I remember one of mine always asking me, you know, what are we doing today? And yeah. I worked out that actually I needed to know the answer to that yeah. question. I needed to preempt that and actually yeah. say, this is what we're doing today, tomorrow, next week. Um, yeah. We don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> no, no. Grown out of it. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. every now and again, we forget to tell yeah. him anything that we're yeah. doing <laughs> and yeah. we get pulled up. I didn't know we were doing this at all on Sunday. or <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it can become really important. I think for and, a period of time as well so yeah and it's interesting I was just thinking then about um there was a couple of play dates that we used to have around here and I found I know this sounds a bit ridiculous <laughs> if I actually put a schedule for the kids oh, play dates yes I had a little kind of I found a little chalkboard 
Oh. And I, you know, on the nature strip, and I used to put like, and this is when we're going to have snack. Even the children that came to play that had a little bit of anxiety or something. Yeah. Kind of, because, you know, sometimes children arrive and they kind of, when snack, when are we eating? When are we doing this? Yes. We doing this? Yes. So I did like a little timetable because that's actually, great. Children yeah. really love structure. Yes. There you go. That's another tip we can take on board. <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed by that one, actually. <laughs> I can relate to that too. Yes. Uh, we've had children come in that we were told would just keep opening up the fridge, yeah. taking food out. Yes. Um, yeah. But we always had food available on the, the table for them and, it, and that didn't mm-hmm. happen. So I think it's just yeah. thinking about how you yeah. respond to what those children need in your environment so yes yeah in that structured way it was a very (laughs) structured (laughs) organized way (laughs) that's great um and do you have any treasured memories that you want to share about therapeutic parenting Uh, yeah your child maybe yeah definitely definitely it would be the play that we had you know the uh, the messy play mm. and the baking at home and yeah definitely yeah. The, 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 I c- can't speak highly enough of cooking with your children baking making a mess using really. all those senses yeah yes. senses and I actually listened to your webinar with Casey oh yes uh, on yeah. sensory and, play yes. yeah and yeah it was amazing she's fabulous and yes. I thought um yeah I did it I didn't actually know why I did it at the time yes you know until I learned more about sensory play yes and um yeah getting a bit messy Mm -hmm. you know yes I do remember one day I don't know what we did and we kind of face painted and we you know (laughs) there's lots of mess yeah it doesn't matter yeah that's a shared experience isn't it It so yeah yeah Yeah. and you've got the feelings attached to it and yeah, and definitely. All the other learnings as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good on and, you. And, and so you're a good cook then, I take oh, it. No. <laughs> 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 some wins and some losses, but <laughs> yeah, experimental. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess the, the training that you've done and the parenting mm-hmm. that you've done, how do you feel that therapeutic parenting in particular helps kids that come from a traumatic background or who've been in permanent care or adopted what are the the wins I guess how do you feel therapeutic parenting helps them yeah. um I think it is healing okay it can be a really healing process mm-hmm. I think it, that creation of felt safety gives mm-hmm. the child a voice mm-hmm. um there to help them emotionally regulate mm-hmm. as best as parents we can Mm-hmm. Uh, and knowing our child you know um noticing their triggers observing mm-hmm. their triggers mm-hmm. um you know like I said earlier about thinking ahead to things um and and just being unconditionally there for them mm-hmm. because you know every child really needs someone there oh yes you know yeah but, yeah unconditional so, are there yeah. for them And really about responding. I think you mentioned something about responding rather than reacting. Yes. I think that's what therapeutic parenting really taught me. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah. Responsive. Yeah. 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 Check Um, yourself and yeah. Check his back. Yeah. It's all, you know, integrated, isn't it? Yeah. Totally. So, um, yeah. uh, And it takes, look, I do it now and I, you know, I still do it now you know, check in with myself. Actually, is this me? Yes. Reacting? Yes. Or, you know, is this me being responsive? Am I responding to this need? Yes. Well, it's hard for us to all just listen. It's about really listening in, isn't it? So listening to what's being said to us and not putting our own kind of lens or judgment or, or anything else over the top of what's being said I say that sometimes at home you know when people Mm. jump to what they think I'm going to say as opposed to what I actually am saying it's like no you actually heard what you thought you would hear from me (laughs) this is what I said so (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. yes that's yeah yeah and uh, I think 
you know it is it's that listening listening yes. listening, listening yeah yeah yeah, yeah hey. definitely and really listening yeah and not underestimating that power of turning up yeah showing up yeah and not kind of listening while you've got your eye on the bolognese sauce or the you know yes you know sometimes turn it off yes sometimes not every time but sometimes you just need to you know turn it off yeah 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 so I guess things like as you just said like cooking together yeah. I mean that's yeah probably an ideal kind of thing where you are side yeah. by side and yeah cooking yeah. has been really it's really significant mm -hmm. in our relationship my daughter. Mm -hmm. and uh, with her dad it's actually making and creating stuff you know having projects yes so he you know he's found a different way in to engage with her yes um to me and uh yeah great Just finding yeah. that point of connection yeah that Good. relational point of connection relational point mm -hmm. yeah and did you read any particular books or access any particular resources that you think could help other families uh, with therapeutic parenting? Yeah, I did actually, and I've, I've brought them with me. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready to show. <laughs> so I'm a really big fan of um, parenting, uh, you know, Dan Siegel. The whole brain child. The whole brain child, and there's mm -hmm. my, uh, my evidence that I've actually read it. And A few post-it like, notes there. <laughs> yeah, I like Dan Siegel because he really is really – um family reading friendly you know he actually even has a refrigerator sheet so he condenses it so that you could even um I think it might be on the internet as well you can even print it off and stick it on your fridge yes it's like reminders um because he talks right. there's not time now but he took he's really big on left and right brain integration for mm -hmm. emotional regulation and stuff okay. like that and yep. it really is really is an accessible read and this is one right. I really appealed to me as a parent of a teenager and it was uh, the power of showing up okay and yep. I, I just wanted to read this blurb um have I got time Is that yeah right? sure of course okay. so it's um how parent her parental presence shapes who our kids become and how their brains get wired okay yeah so um and it's another Dan Siegel great uh, with Tina Bryson and um yeah it's it really, he says, one of the main things that a parent can do. Yes. You know, all that brain science and rewiring the brain and just that presence again, being present, being yes. really present. And it so. doesn't take much, I've got to say. So um, we had four kids in our yes. house and for me it was trying to create a half an hour mm. for a child to feel like they had some quality yes. time you know at the end of the day that's sort of two hours a day you can always you know or even if it's 10 or 15 minutes of that one-on-one -on -one, yeah you know connection time where it's you know one-on-one -on -one, so yes <laughs> and it might not even me need to be the 30 minutes no you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah correct yes correct um, I yes. just had that in my head because it was easier for me to work <laughs> that way yeah, <laughs> everyone's yeah. got their own way I guess so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. and are there any other complementary practices or programs that you think we should investigate as well so because often these things sort of you know toggle into other areas so yeah um look there's lots and lots of stuff out there I'm a big fan of the Australian childhood website I mm -hmm. often go and look at their materials and I think they've got lots of parenting programs um life story work I think okay fantastic yep. to do with your children mm -hmm. um and I think your child knowing their own story is really really empowering mm. you know so I think that mm. is uh, another program I'd definitely investigate okay um yeah, yeah. and, and I, I can't speak um highly enough for just networking with your parents yes. and other parents yes. and also you know um your you know PTA families as well you've got lots and lots of resources and I've used lots of resources in the past yes uh, and because then you realize actually you're not on this journey alone yes there's always someone you know, someone that's been yeah, there before we'll kind of you offer you some support or yeah yes no yes very true yeah. so 
Yeah. Um, all right. Any last thoughts or comments that you wanted to share today? Um, um, I would actually say that um, really, yeah, it's just about not trying to fix things for your child. Yes. Um, not fixing everything. I think, you know, therapeutic parenting isn't about going in and kind of, you know, doing the helicopter parenting and being there with to solve everything all the time. It's mm -hmm. if I could describe it in any way, I'd say it's about holding your child. Okay. You know, holding yes. the hard stuff. Yes. And supporting them in, you know, supporting them to work yes. through it and being there for them. Yes. And a sounding board. And whilst they might not, like teenagers, might not actually appreciate you being around yes. and being there, they will look back on it and yes. realize. Yes. And appreciate. Oh, yeah, yes. they will. Yes. You know? Yeah. I had someone that had my back, you know? Yes, yes. No to what, really? Yeah. So I think that's it, really. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a really good point. So, and distinguishing that from helicopter parenting where you are sort of stepping in and yeah. creating solutions maybe. So um, yes. this is about really checking in with and listening and, and being available as a a person of support yeah so it's a really good point so and it's hard to do and it's wearing as a parent more wearing sometimes listening and yes uh than it is to go in and solve so it's depleting it's yes. depleting sometimes mm -hmm. and so i would also say just as parents be kind to yourself yeah. yes it's really a well-worn saying, you know, get the oxygen mask, you know, on the plane before your child. And really, yes, it's really true. Yes. You know, how can you be the best parent? Yeah. Be kind to yourself. Yes. Yes. And even if it's five minutes, go for a walk yeah. around the block, lie on the grass, look up at the clouds. So <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. small things we can all do to take care of ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. If the foundation's broken, the yeah. wall doesn't sort of yeah. get fixed or get up. So yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah. So hard to do in practice sometimes. It's really hard. It yeah. is. I know. I it's know. a good reminder. You don't even notice it until the end of the day. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then, you know. Yeah. It's, Correct. And yeah. no, noticing it before it's too late. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. so worn out that you're checked out for three days or. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's great. Well, thank you so much for all oh, your insights you. and information and, and sharing your story. I'm sure that'll be of value to other families. Yeah, thank uh, you. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really enjoyable, actually. Thank oh, you. good. <laughs> <laughs> and to anyone making the time to listen to this recording, thank you for giving up your valuable time for the benefit of the young people in your life. If you're a kinship permanent carer or um, parent needing support, please contact PCA Families and please subscribe or follow or leave a review or share an idea for a future topic. Until next time, thank you.